You know what really grinds my rear guts? <laughs> Vanguard boosting. Why? Well, Vanguard boosting has always been based on anime character appearances as well as fan demand. Whichever character that appears on that episode, you can be sure future boosting is going to include that clan as well. Now, on a business standpoint, that's a very good thing because I'm going to throw money. But as a regular consumer, as a casual player, that is very bad. Very, very bad. People will be demanding for very high-end god tier cards from meta clans such as Royal Paladin, for instance, uh, Gold Paladin, Shadow Paladin, um, Kagero, etc, etc. I mean, yeah, those clans are strong, yes. That's because of the fan demand. Everyone is going for that and there really isn't much diversity for other clans that were created in the first place. Clans like Spike Brothers, Murakumo, Nubatama, or heck, even Oracle Think Tank. So everyone's going to be using the same thing and it just becomes not fun anymore. You just can't trash left right center without even yourself knowing it becomes very predictable because you know what card is going to come out next and honestly i don't think that's very fun at all also it lacks variety like i mentioned because not many people will be playing other clans at all now let me give you a great example which will strengthen what i'm saying oracle think tank like i mentioned before there hasn't been much boost for it and the most recent boost, which is GBT-05. God, that was horrible. You should have seen the face when I saw Kamu Susano out. It was so bad. I was like, ah, I got no head to tear, so I will not tear, but you know how angry I am. But on a serious note, of all the G units strike fusions so far, Kamu Susano is one of the worst. And that is coming from an Oracle Think Tank player himself. If you consider his skill, it's not very tied into his grade 3, which a lot of strike fusions do. I mean, yeah, he does have. On hit top 2, put one in your hand, then the other to the bottom of the deck. Oh, yeah, cool. And his GB3 skill, plus 2k to the whole field. Ooh. But that's about it. It's really very underwhelming, and it doesn't really help you much unless you really know how to play numbers game whatsoever. And not only that, where the heck did his plus 5k1 create when you have 4 cards in your hand or more go? It's like completely gone. It's almost like, like imagine I'm Bushiro. It's like, they don't need this. They already have so many, so many pressure. You've got Silent Tom. Plus 2k to hold you. No, 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 no need critical. No need critical. Uh, what got restriction? No, I never heard about it before. Standing? Nah, 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 nah. Give me a ring. Plus 2k, plus 2k, plus 2k. So I feel that what could have been better for Kamu Susano is to give him back at least the extra critical. Then that way, if you really plus, if you they still want to stick with plus 2k to the whole field, then okay, it gives a much higher power Susano with a much more threatening pressure. So your opponent will think twice about whether they want to guard against that or take it like a man. And knowing a lot of Oracle Think Tank players, myself included, will play at least 8 criticals in the whole deck itself. So that adds on even more to the pressure. What if I no guard? I'll end up taking 5 damage at most. Which is supposed to be a good thing. Oracle Think Tank really lacks in a lot of power, pressure, and on hit, um, on hit pressure. And I feel that that is the reason why not many people are playing Oracle Think Tank because it's so watered down it's almost like Bushiroad is trying to atone for the sins and failing very hard at it what do I mean by that? Silent Tom is the best example whatever that whatever problem that comes in the only thing I can think of is because of Silent Tom they made a too powerful a card and they ended up making huge mistakes for it people start coming with crazy combos they don't restrict it, that's fine but that what they end up doing after that is doing subsequent boosts they give really, really crappy cards that no one wants to play anymore. And I think that's a very bad thing. The only good cards that come out are cards that the characters in the anime uses. Fine, by me. But what about now in the G era? Misaki is not going to appear for a very long time. So there won't be any boost for cards for, for, for sub-clans like Tsukuyomi, for Magus, etc. And Tsuneto is a retard. So we are not going to get any more boost from Kamu Susano anyway. So I feel that a clan booster would be great for clans that are not as prominent but really, really need the boostings. They are doing that, which is fine. But it also brings me to my next point. Ridiculous boosting. When a clan is being boosted, they get boosted to ridiculous levels. It suddenly became the best thing in the world at the time. But when more, more things start coming in, more booster for other clans, that thing suddenly becomes the crappiest thing in the world. Suddenly, it gets pushed aside and no one's gonna care about it anymore. It's very inconsistent and it risks alienating casual players like me, Leon, Cap, and 
just pretty much about anyone who plays for fun. And that's the main important thing about Vanguard. It's supposed to be fun. You play it because you want to, because you want to feel the fun out of it, not because you want to win, which I feel is the mentality of the current uh, currency nowadays. The boostings have become in such a way that it's tasteless, it's not fun anymore, it's so predictable, and if there's no way to counter it, you're pretty much a sitting duck. And that grinds my rear guts.